What up, everybody? It's your boy Chuck Diesel, aka The Lone Wolf, and we're back again with another episode of Sake Sundays. Gotta say a special thank you to Sake High for providing the drink and tell you to go check out sakehigh.com and get some order to your doorstep. They're serving it up internationally. And then also gotta say thank you to God's favorite jewels for providing this for our lovely guests. Oh. And with this mm-hmm. bracelet, you know, also go check out them. And then for the most important thing about today's episode, go ahead and tell the people who you are. Hi guys, I'm Avriel. <laughs> no. Oh, you're fine. I'll redo that. My name's Avriel. I'm a neo soul and R&B singer songwriter from Oakland and Sacramento, California, and I just moved to Los Angeles. All right. How long have you been out here? Um, I actually moved here August of 2022. I keep forgetting, so I'm like... <laughs> I mean, two years is so... Yeah, it's been fresh. speeding by. Oh, has it been fast? Yeah, it's been it's been pretty fast. Right. Yeah, I'm, like enjoying it. It. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it a lot. Oh, what part of LA you moved to? Um, we, me and my boyfriend moved to downtown originally, but now we stay in North Hill, so I'm loving the valley. It's very... It's relaxing. It's more relaxing, not so um crazy and chaotic, I guess I should say. I hear yeah. you. No, I just moved to Inglewood, and I was in uh, San Fernando Valley oh, for okay. like two years. Yeah. But honestly, I'm so chill. It's like <laughs> both of them are, neither of them are like where I grew yeah. up. So it's like, whatever. For real. <laughs> My aunt stays in South LA, yeah. and it's a little wild over there too, but I like it. It's like, it reminds me of home. It reminds me of Sacramento a lot. Certain areas, I guess you used to say, like, uh, are more homey to you i think maybe because it's like cultural you know yeah. you see more black people you see uh, you see more uh you know latina families like, yeah. yeah so i'm educating myself even on their their culture as well yeah. honestly they it's like filipinos and chinese people they're like no I'm, not, I'm filipino yeah. not chinese yeah. so i respect it because a lot of people might you know some they not all people that look african-american might be african-american right they might be um what is it uh honduran you know yeah, yeah so you just have to ask because we're all mixed up around here. Yeah. 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 Shots to being awkward. Sometimes it works in your your favor. You feel me? Yeah. Like, oh, you're so awkward. It's cute. Bye. I actually <laughs> like. I actually am learning to to enjoy that about myself. Or yeah, I like it. Just like, lean into it. It's like don't try and downplay it or be embarrassed or like ashamed because then you hold back sometimes on even saying. Like mm-hmm. you're saying it was the first thought that came to mind. It wasn't meant to be offensive. Yeah. It was like. If it's the truth, say it. You know, the only, well, besides my boyfriend, my best friend understands too, because we're both super awkward <laughs> and we get each other and we're like, girl, I said that too. Or, you know, so, so like, shout, oh, out to, okay, shout out to BC. I, nah, I used to think I was awkward. And then I was like, whoa, even when I'm not trying to be awkward, people are still telling me mm-hmm. I'm being awkward. Yeah. I can't think about this anymore, bro. <laughs> like, I'm not even about to try. Because even though I'm awkward, they said they like me, so yeah. cool. It's whatever. Oh, this is good. You took the whole thing? Yeah, it's just a little oh. shot. Um, and they're super, like, smooth. They are very smooth. I don't. I just think I like to sip slow. <laughs> we don't have to take you I mean, real quick, but okay. this is a half a shot for now. And uh, something else just about not holding back on your personality is uh, when I was in school, we had a teacher who was telling us, it's just like, if someone shows up completely authentic, and part of the reason they told us was like, we're performance based. So they were like, don't hold back on what you're performing because you might just let somebody else feel like, all right, right. I can step out of what I was trying to cover up too, mm-hmm. if they did it too. So it's like, sometimes you can inspire somebody to be more themselves yeah just by being yourself he's like you didn't even do anything but you gave somebody the power to do something and exactly then, so i feel like even um like when it comes to my artistry one thing i'm learning to really fully step into is just my myself on stage yeah and i noticed that I, I hold back a lot like vocally and i i am learning I'm, i am practicing more what um, you do to practice vocally like i'm starting to like get more into rehearsals i just started working with the band yeah and um i'm rebranding so that's that's another thing i'd like to talk about but i was so used to performing with my tracks in vegas when i was doing a lot of open mics and, and showcases yeah. that i never knew what it felt like to really like you know just fill the room out with the band and connect with your fans and no, so yeah. that's what i kind of want to do more but 
as I'm like rehearsing, sometimes I notice like my voice will crack or I'll do certain things that I still do at home when I'm just singing and I surprise myself and I'm just like, girl, if you don't just try this new thing and just let it like, you know, well, figure out what it comes out. Because I think a lot of artists have something that's different about them and that's why people kind of like grasp onto them. You yeah. know, that's why they like that, that artist specifically. So I'm just still learning myself as an artist, I guess, still discovering new things about myself and just trying to really give my fans who I am on and off the stage, I guess. So they, they, really connect with that i don't want to be afraid to do something that i you know didn't try i guess and it feels good because i feel like i was um i never had lessons um i started singing at eight and writing music at eight and i um consider myself self-taught so sometimes when i like listen to the greats or listen to who do you other, consider the greats whitney so for me, I'm just like, okay, if I hear something or if I listen to an artist enough, I can like, like kind of uh, replicate clip. certain riffs and runs. Cause I've yeah. never been really, I've been kind of like dabbling on and off with trying, like trying new runs. And I used to kind of like get mad at myself, like, oh my gosh, that sounds horrible. But when I listen to videos of me singing at 14, I'm like, oh my gosh, girl, you came along. No, yeah, it's all <laughs> you said that you're uh, in the middle of branding and rebranding yeah. uh, what did you consider as your brand before so i got baptized before moving to los angeles and i really wanted to basically make a a new a new home within the christian r&b realm or element community <laughs> and i started really just kind of kind of having these conversations with god and myself and I was just telling my boyfriend today that I knew I was overthinking everything after getting baptized. B baptized. It was like, it wasn't, I don't want to say that it was, um, oh, you can't just do Christian R&B. Yeah. But the music that I grew up on was mostly Black Eyed Peas, NDIRE, a lot of Neo Soul, a lot of artists that were just storytelling, um, Nas, um, Oh my gosh, so many, just so many artists. I think I was thinking Common too, you know, and I really want to, I feel like my purpose now that I'm rebranding because I was just making, I was making a lot of R&B hip hop music originally. And I, some of the things that I was talking about were very vulgar or, you know, things that I was talking about, like, man, that maybe did me wrong. Kind of just speaking my truth, you know, yeah. as artists kind of do. And when I listen back to some of those songs, I'm like, if I was a young girl listening to that, you know, the same way, and I don't want to bash any artists, but um, like, I don't want to bash any mainstream artists, but if I was a young girl listening to my favorite artists, I would want to know that I'm actually listening to something that's going to either inspire me, motivate me, bring me out of depression, make me maybe help my confidence more. Yeah. And I don't want to be putting the wrong things out into the world anymore. So I once I started to just understand what my rebrand really meant to me like okay you're christian you got baptized you're trying to live according to the word now i just really didn't want to try to fit in so much into this christian community that i for i lost sight of myself and so what i've been figuring out and what god's been telling me is to just be true to you still be a storyteller still be an amazing songwriter still make r&b and neo soul but the music that i that inspired me as a kid i want to really tap back into that so kind of leaving behind too much of the, like I said, I was born in Oakland, grew up in Sacramento, and I was very inspired by a lot of like hip hop. You know, my brothers are both rappers. They freestyled a lot. And so- You guys have any songs together? My brothers, um, my oldest brother, um, he's actually still in, he's in jail right now and he'll be home in a few months. But we actually did a song um, when he got home, when he came home one time and we have to actually redo it. But my other brother, we never did a song together. And um, I do want to do, like, put out music with them. And um, they just really inspired me to just challenge my writing. And basically, I just kind of feel like if I can hold on to just being still who Abriel is, but putting out a message into the world that you know, I feel that Michael Jackson would love. I'm like big, I've always been a lover, you know, and I'm like I just don't want to talk about things that, like, you know, I don't want to be 
talking about how I perform anymore. Like, I, I never did that a lot, but, like, maybe making a sex record, I don't feel like that's really necessary. You yeah. know, um, talking about getting money and getting to the bag and which it, it could still, you could still talk about those things in a certain way. I don't want to say that that's, like, you bad. know, bad. Yeah. But saying, like, I'm going to make it rain in the strip club and, right, you yeah. know, like, all like, of those things. And, and yeah, so me money. personally, I want... Once you put your art out into the world, it's there for everybody. And so looking now looking at my music, I'm like, I'm having trouble trying to remove some of my music from distro kids. Like they want to let me into their um their site. For some reason I have to like contact them, which I've been like putting to the side. So some of those songs that I actually want off of all platforms, I'm kind of just like, it is what it is. Oh, yeah. If people find me now at where I am now in my life, they'll see and what I'm talking about and who journey. I'm trying to be. Yeah, and I don't want to be ashamed of the music that the art, I don't want to say music, the art that I put out there because at some point it helped me heal. It yeah. like, you know, um, there was a boy I was talking to that literally got to know me for a few days and I was like, Oh my gosh, she's amazing. You know, ended up, I don't know what his intentions were, but he told me like, you know what? I think he honestly may have had, you know, somebody in his life already. And I kind of, me and my friend were doing some digging and he just kind of cut me off. And I was like, that was weird. So I wrote like an amazing song off of that situation. <laughs> and I put like a funny TikTok out about it and it kind of blew up on Instagram. And I had certain family members saying, you should you should take that down. Like it looks bad. And I was like, but a lot of people were like- I Relate or think it's funny. Yeah, they, yeah. they were, you know. So as an artist, I love that we're able to express ourselves. But now I'm just, I want to move with intent. I want to yeah. know that, like, you can still talk about, I'm definitely in love right now, so I won't be talking about any heartbreak, but I really want to talk about just life, the beauty oh, of do life. Do you feel like and... you have to be going through heartbreak in order to make a song about heartbreak, though? Mm, no, because as a songwriter, I can write a record for somebody right. else that's right. going through heartbreak, too. Like, I think I've always been really in tune with my own emotions and, like, listening to other people's problems and, like, you know, saying, okay, where are you at? What do you want to talk about? And I could pin something. So that's just, that's always the formula that works for me. But do you write for other people? I do. You? Yeah, I, I, I write for myself mostly, but I have written records for other people. I've written songs for my best friend. She's an amazing R&B artist. And um, Lacey, she's based in Las Vegas. I've written for Cameron LeVert. Um, Jared Lavert's baby girl. She's an awesome. I think she might be in the pop genre, right. but she also does R and B, and she's an amazing artist too. Um, I've written for her, um, and yeah, I'm just still trying to. I've collaborated with other artists too, but I do want to like get some major placements eventually. So that's another thing that I I plan on doing while I'm here in Los Angeles. Well, yeah. Only been two years. So. Yeah. It's probably a lot. Too? No, I don't. <laughs> I've 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 been wanting to move to LA for like the longest, and now that I'm here, I just feel like it's where I'm supposed to be. Like I could just feel it in my soul. What's like, your favorite thing so far since being here? Being here? Oh my gosh! Honestly, what we were talking about earlier for me, it's the culture. The culture. Yeah, yeah like I so love much. going to even in Vegas. I didn't take advantage of all the food places in right. here. There's so many. Yeah. Like I'm probably not gonna be. I don't know. Like. I don't know. I feel like it's going to take a while to just absorb all of the different restaurants. And, no, 100%. And, and everything that's Yeah, and locations. Yeah. There's places in Long Beach. There's places in Santa Monica. Oh, yeah. There's mom and pop I was about locations. to say, there's high scale, like, there's low scale, there's yeah. little taco trucks, yeah. like little carts and stuff. People but like, you got to try that. Exactly. You know that one spot mm -hmm. is like up the street from here, bro. That I have a roommate who's actually a chef mm -hmm. and like, He'll tell me where to get the best pizza. Oh, like, oh my bro, gosh. You want pizza? You want sushi? So it's like, if I ever want anything, I could be like, <laughs> I yeah, love I'm, pizza. I'm text. love food. Yeah. And so just like hearing you say that, the same thing for people from here. It's yeah. like, there's so much of it here. Right. It inspires Like, you have to try everything. Yeah. And yeah. Um, another thing I would say that I love is how everybody is very supportive. Like, you're going to, and I, I think I was just in rehearsal um, with my band my band yesterday and somebody had said, you know, there's hate everywhere. Like, you know, people are going to hate in wherever you go, but there's love like in the right places as well. And I feel like where I, where I was in Vegas, there was, um, there was some support and then you have a lot of competition, but here I noticed that everybody's supporting each other. Or if you see somebody that you saw before in a, in a certain room, they're, yeah, exactly. And it's so genuine. So 
I love the love that, like, we're all chasing a dream, you know? Oh, yeah. But um, it's probably the same in Atlanta, same in Chicago, Canada, you know? But support is as simple as a share, you know? Like, that's how I feel. No, 100%. Um, and a lot of people make it very difficult to just, you know, like, it's... Even if you're not popping out to every single show. Right, you don't have to come to Even if you share it, there might be somebody on your timeline that says, hey, I want to go to this event. So I I just really love how the support is here in L.A. And I love supporting different platforms and different creatives. So that's another, I would definitely say that's another reason why I like being here. I always wanted to move here because I just felt free. I love the beach. And I was in Vegas for so long. It was dry. Uh, Sacramento, there's water, but there's no beaches. And for real, yeah, there's rivers there, but in San Francisco, there's like what is that? A uh, a lake in San Francisco? Is that a lake or like a, a beach? Oh, it's like I a, have no clue. He's like, I have no clue. <laughs> he's like, at me. He's like, oh, oh yeah, it's no a beach clue. in San Francisco, and like, yeah, where the Br- the Golden Gate Bridge is. I think it's like a yeah, it's a beach. Wait, that's that's not like a big body of water. No, it's actually kind of similar to a beach. Just I as guess. soon as from like the picture, I thought like it was. Yeah, that huge. is like a lake or something. Like, yeah, like Brooklyn <laughs> Bridge type. You feel me? That's yeah. what the pictures of it yeah. makes it look like. Like it's up like that, but I've never even thought. So about I just always felt really at peace here, and I would always come to visit. And I'm just like, girl, you're like I'm such an earthy person. I love nature. I don't like bugs like that, but I'm a nature person. I don't I know if anybody's you. ever said that, but I did. I don't uh-huh. mess with snakes. I don't mess with spiders, but I love being around green plants and all of that. When did you figure that out? Uh, Just, I I don't know, actually. (laughs) Well, I do. As a kid, me and my brother used to, um, we used to catch like tadpoles and raise them. And my mom was like, you guys have to put those frogs back into the water. So that was my childhood, my my childhood, my childhood (laughs) consisted of me and my, my brother always adventuring. I would adventure by myself if I didn't have people to play with. You know, I was, like, always in, like, as a kid, you're not like, oh, there's a spider, oh, there's a bug. But, you know, unless it was, like, a really big one. But as I got older, I did more photo shoots in nature, and I just used to be, you know, just out in the world. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, there's something, like, that I, you know, don't like. And then my nerves would kick in. So I think that's when I started noticing. But I enjoy hiking and like I said, just being around like water and for the beach, like I love my feet touching the sand. I like hearing the waves and I like how they like when the sun starts going down, they just they, they move faster so that, you know, it comes back to the shore the tides faster, coming, yeah. the tides. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I just realized that I love being an earthy person, but I don't like the bugs and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah no, I hear you. And you said, you don't know, whoever said that me like yeah. growing up as a kid it was like, like you said you outside yeah. it is what it is mm-hmm. somewhere i used to catch bees mm-hmm. and i was like call them my pets and name them and stuff i was like who does that it was like me but like by the time i was 12 13 i think around the time you start caring about your outfits yeah it's like but i'm not trying to get dirty right too. but don't like but <laughs> it, it, it was like... until i was like 18 19 and like I don't even know why we were out in the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Just teenagers were like, you want to go oh drive in? Like, like, sure. And we would just be out there and walking. And I was like, yeah, this is really nice. Yeah. This is, I like this. I feel like I'm learning so many new things about life. Like, I thought I was, like, against mushrooms, against onions. <laughs> and this boy got me eating them. Silly. So, like, I feel like eventually I could learn to, like, this is funny. I like the ocean, right? But I'm afraid to like snorkel or like do any of anything that's, get in a I submarine. Mean, and I say that because <laughs> I'd be scared to go in a submarine. So it's like just because of the one that went down. Yeah, it's just I don't want to know what's really down there. Not even that. I'm the movie. Claustrophobic. Like being in this metal <laughs> ball. Yeah. What happens if all the power goes out? We just see. Yeah, and like, I feel like what was that magic school bus growing up? Yeah. They used to really be in the water and just. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't want to. I mean, they weren't really just... in the water though. Yeah, they were... <laughs> <laughs> but, but it no, made me real. think of what everything. What everything that's in the water. Yeah, yeah. no, it's, it's treacherous. So I'm good. I'll stay <laughs> above. Means... I'll stay right by the sand. Well, they say that we know like not even fifty percent of what's actually underwater yeah because you can't even get that deep mm-hmm. underwater because the pressure breaks everything right, right, and the right. temperature is too cold so it's like 
what if something that's that far down just decided to come up today? Mm-hmm. Like, and some people are like, well, it can't come up. And if it did come up, it's like, you don't know. It's that. funny that you say that because when certain like pictures surface on the internet of like um, things that get washed up, yeah, and I'm like, is this what real? Is, is it? No. I, at the yeah. time, people weren't saying it was AI. It was like they're like it's Photoshop. You know what I'm saying? And now that's what's crazy though. With AI, there's so much more room for speculation and questions. Like, but is this real? Yeah. <laughs> like, I, is like, this real? That's that's honestly that's how I was feeling years ago with like the whole alien stuff. And now when I when they started telling us that they were real, I'm like, okay. <laughs> What can we do with this information? Because oh, we already were, like, knew this. Uh, yeah. At the Pentagon or whatever? Like, yeah, like I think the they were. Last year, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. it was just such a big deal that everybody was like, okay, what's new? Because we still got bills. And we no, still what got, was crazy you know... it was like, look at everything else that's going on. Like, yeah. And tell us they're something. deciding to tell us that aliens exist yeah. now. Why now? <laughs> and we have these conversations, like me and my family members, and I think we make a lot of jokes about it, but I'm, I'm like, if I'm being honest, it's like, hey, like, what is if they're if they're on? actually living amongst us, like, what can we do? Like, welcome to what our world. What is your thought? What is your opinion? What's your I opinion? don't know what to think anymore when it comes to like just what's out there. Do you think aliens are living amongst us? Yeah. Do you think they're like shape shifting or wearing suits? <laughs> For real, it's so funny because I'm like it. If I'm being honest, or, or do you think the aliens are just I like sound us? so crazy probably yeah. talking about this, but I think they are, and I don't know how they're doing it. But when it comes to all the technology we're being introduced to, yeah, I'm just like a lot of people. Have you ever heard of the book? What is it? Uh, riding a pale white horse or something? No. Pale white horse on a pale white horse before before it's over. I know it's something pale white horse, mm-hmm. and it's talking about like. The idea that aliens are living amongst us and that yeah. it had been worked out amongst governments yeah. for it to happen. Right. I just kind of feel like if they're here, they're here, and what can we do about it? That's kind of like, I think, how everybody feels. Um, and if there's something that they are hiding from us, it's just like, you guys already told us now that they exist, but so where's the rest is there of the anything story? that we should be aware no. of, I yeah. guess, because we, we're so used to our own species, so it's like... You know, are not even our own species, our own reality. Yeah. I feel like that's why it doesn't even get questioned so much yeah. because people are like, "All right, well, this is already the world we're mm-hmm. living in." So until because you know what happened in Miami, people were like, they saw what they saw, and it's like, how if why would people make that up if they actually saw something? You know, and then it's like everybody, all the different sightings of aliens that wasn't made up when you know they were right. saying it was. So I just honestly. It's just kind of like we got bigger things to like worry about for real, like war, you know, no, everything that's you. going on around us. So it's like that's just half of like the it's not even a problem. It's just like it does. Sometimes I wake up and it doesn't even feel real. No, it's yeah. like we've got so many different things going on. Right. I feel like, what am I even supposed to focus on? But yeah. that's part of. But like, I guess what I'm overall. saying is that if they're here, like, and they're not, you know, how like in, in a lot of movies and shows, it's like you know we come in peace. So it's like I, I hope you guys do because <laughs> welcome. We got bills here. We you got stages. No, and you literally, sing, when you I rap, first asked, you like, know? do you think they're amongst us? And it's like people thinking about it. It's like some people are just like, are they paying taxes? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Are they about to put some on this man? I didn't think ground? about that, but no, and for real. Like, that's how some people are like, are they citizens of the alien aliens? <laughs> like, the same as the illegal aliens? And if they, like, they actually operate and think anything like we do, they're probably going to get real tired of how things are operating. And leave to you. Because I know they we came are. Here, so. So honestly, if they did come here, they had to come here for a reason. But that's what I'm saying. <laughs> if they're a part of the reason why they're like, hey, let's test this technology. Hey, let's test let's oh, test yeah. this they could be the possible reason that all this technology is happening because i honestly don't believe oh, i don't want to say that that man is that no that advance i mean know? some people but, it's interesting to say because i if you look at ancient civilizations some of the technology that it seems they had mm-hmm. outdates but mm-hmm. predates stuff that we know how to do you right. feel me? and this is one thing that i always just take into account is uh the dimensions for flight mm-hmm. is like there are aerodynamic dimensions that you shape something in mm-hmm. in order for it to fly, right? right, right. You know what I mean? Like, and so after recent society discovered how to fly things, mm-hmm. they were doing research in ancient Egypt, mm-hmm. Africa, and they found 
a little craft that was just this big. It was just like a Where they carving. Were already... But the dimensions, if you scale it up, it's the exact same dimensions. Wow. It was just a small model yeah. of the same. I think I actually heard about that before because, yeah, there was a lot of different things that they, like, Already were and, doing, yeah. Yeah. And so, it's just interesting to say because... And just adopted by men and they, re, you know, read, re, tried to, like, not read, tried, but they... They found it later yeah. on, but with them finding it later on and calling it new technology, people will say, like, ancient Egypt had their whole own religions, connections to beings, mm-hmm. and if you look at their gods, people will be like... They're aliens, like mm-hmm. so. It's like, have aliens already been here, man? Right. That's like, what good, is all of this stuff? I never even thought about it like that. And I different people's perspectives are like, so between like, New York and sometimes what is it? Uh, what's the other state they're always talking about? They always has like a whole bunch of crazy. Oh, stuff. Florida, Florida, oh, yeah. Florida, yeah. But that's <laughs> like, LA has stuff like that going yeah, on too. Yeah. Like, uh-huh. I remember yeah. seeing this lady in a wheelchair once, and she, um, somebody posted her. She was started squatting. It's been, uh, if you walk she around has, Hollywood, I'm like, why would y'all film her? She's already homeless, but y'all filming her. I feel pee. like LA is just weird, but New York is yeah, yeah. like, like what the heck is this? Like people yeah. walking around with microwaves in their head. I'm like, yeah. what is that? So the reason why <laughs> I'm, like, I'm bringing that up is because I feel like sometimes that's how I feel like the world is just now. Yeah. It just doesn't. Not I guess as sense. kids, we didn't see it like as this. Much. Yeah. yeah, we saw what was pictured and cut out mm-hmm. for us to see on TV and. It seems like yesterday, but... Let me get back on, let me get back on. Honestly, this is all feels like a distraction, because it's like, like you said, you know, the things they do tell you, they don't tell you all of it, so... No, 100%. Yeah. And, and it's like, just you get so, so many parts there. of the story, and it's like, if you just look at, just even politi- politics, it's like, the news sources will both talk about the same polar opposite points, mm-hmm. but we're going to argue three facts out of 12 facts. Mm-hmm. And we're just going to argue these three points. Mm-hmm. And you pick one side, I'm going to argue the other side. And we're not going to talk about the actual nine key points that we could interact with right. and make a difference. We're just going to talk about the headache. Mm-hmm. And then with having this, like, you walk outside and you see so much random stuff happening. You see different construction buildings happening. You see mm-hmm. different uh, boycotts and stuff happening. Then you look at advertisements. You see advertisements for 50 different things. You see all these restaurants. You see all these different food places. Is like over stimulation. It was like before you even decide what restaurant you're going to go to eat at today, mm-hmm. you had to decide you didn't want to buy new shoes, decide you like the car that you have, exactly. figure out which way you wanted to go to work because there's traffic <laughs> on this freeway. You just had four different routes on your GPS on where to go to work, mm-hmm. and you haven't even been awake for two hours. Like you have. Yeah decision overload and fatigue yeah. before the day's even halfway over and you haven't even been trying to pick nothing mm-hmm. but you just have options thrown at you right all day you know me and my family were just talking today about just how important it is for like especially for black households to talk about mental health yeah and i know this has been like a major subject for the past few years now because a lot of people literally go get that overwhelmed or go through so much like on a day to day basis. Yeah, they have to figure out how to find it. And so I'm like really glad that me and my siblings and my mom were talking about it because we didn't really understand that we all have all these different traumas. You know? And I just feel like now that um just now that I'm older and I'm like able to really like just process things differently and like find different solutions to you know, figure out maybe where something went wrong. Like, I can do it a lot faster. Yeah, it's not like I'm just automatically, (laughs) I'm mad because of this. It's like, no. Right. Well, what happened before Mm -hmm. I even got there? Like, what did I say? Yeah. You feel me? It's like awareness. Being aware of, like, something happened that I don't have to necessarily Mm -hmm. combat, but I could pick the situation apart. Right. And figure out how it even became this. Exactly. Yeah. But I feel like that just comes with maturity and growth mm-hmm. as well as, you know, wanting to. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> right. But as a so kid. So much decision making. I was going to say, because, yeah, there's a lot of, like, just every day there's something you got, like, well, I almost, not even decision making, sacrifice, you know, yeah. like, yeah. No, it goes, like, two and two, because sometimes you have to make the decision to sacrifice, mm-hmm. and other times it's just, like, I wasn't even thinking about that. No, I don't need it. So it's, like. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I'm learning that with the everything. Like, you know, I, I'm i such a fashion girly that I love to shop, but I there's times that I'm like, you know what? I'll feel better if I take the same money that I would buy four outfits with and put it back into my music. No, yeah. And whether it's rehearsal time, whether it's, you know, a song you already have ready to record, you can go 
get some studio time with that. Oh, yeah. So those are small sacrifices I feel like that personally make me feel better now. Because I'm like, the younger me would have been like, ooh, fashion over, ooh, she ain't no. cute, ooh, you know, if, wherever. Like, it doesn't even matter, not even those brands, but just if it was something, even if it's food. And so I'm oh, like yeah. learning to save. I'm learning to just budget better and really figure out what's priority. You and know? something you just said, though, is it makes you feel better because it's taking like, care of bills and you're things realizing like, that. like it's, I don't know, it's just stepping stones yeah. to certain stuff. And it's like no different than like you said with your music, mm -hmm. looking back on what you were singing when you were 14, mm -hmm. where it's like, oh, wow. Once you realize it's like, all right, bet. Say for a year, I didn't buy half as much of mm -hmm. the stuff that I thought I was about to. Right. And instead I bought this. Mm -hmm. And then you look back in a year like, dang, I got a lot now. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. sometimes the baby steps. I Sometimes wish I would have started that. saving early. Like, like if I would have saved everything Everybody from when I graduated is. from high school, what, when I was working at Nike, oh my gosh. Oh, you know what's crazy? I didn't know at that time in my life that I really wanted to pursue music yeah. the way that I am now. So, man. 60% of Americans are living in debt. So whenever you feel bad about not having as much money as you want, yeah. just remember that people 10 years younger than you or 20 years older than you yeah. is looking at their bank accounts 50% like, the same as you. <laughs> and it could go either way for how that's that 50 true. is looking. That's you feel true. me? Because this is one thing I was like, yo, there are people who are like 50, 45, like mm -hmm. they done had two mortgages, bro, and total <laughs> cars, like... That's a hundred thousand in debt already, and all they did was buy a house. Yeah, like so. I feel like everybody is just at a point where we're trying to figure out how to have consistent a consistent yeah. whether Balance. it's um, residual like um, is it residual income? Yeah, or oh my gosh, is it residual? I'm a brain fart. I mean, everybody's moving. yeah, it's, just something, like something consistent. that's consistently coming in. Mm -hmm. so that's it, like yeah, where residual. you put something out there exactly, and it pays you. Like I stopped doing hair, but I really love doing like uh. Fox Locks. Yeah. And so I'm starting to get back into that. I just relaunched my business and I eventually want to sell a lot, like custom locks, handmade locks on Etsy. Yeah. That's residual. Um, I, I really wanted to get into um, real estate, but then once I learned like Peer Space was really awesome too, um, I was like, oh my gosh, well, I like decorating and I know that if I had the income right now to um, buy a commercial property, I would like Renting. In a way, flip that by designing it, furnishing, uh, yeah. furnishing, uh, for, uh, refurbishing it, or whatever, and having that as a creative space for you know artists and yeah. stuff like that. So I thought that was really a cool investment. But I just feel like everybody's just at a point where they're trying to have a consistent flow so of income so they yeah. can afford the lifestyle they want. No, yeah. I don't personally want a luxury lifestyle. I just want to be comfortable. No, yeah. And there are a lot of people that want. A luxury lifestyle but everybody's different um i'm just learning that you know especially with the 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 the, the information we know from like There's so much information from, but the artists in the past that yeah. like we're taking advantage of like from by record labels no, yeah you see so many more mainstream artists now starting businesses on top of their music no 100%. whether it's like starting like you know how drake has like his ovo he has yeah. his stores and stuff um you have artists that open up boutiques you know so it's like their music doesn't fund everything you just have to be able to really under like it's branding. no yeah it's, it's, branding yeah. And how far it's what you love it. to do and you can't make a lot of money from it but when you create more branches from that it's just you just have to really I mean, know business like, isn't just about doing one thing really mm -hmm. well it's about building exactly it's like jay-z said it not a business man yeah. i'm a business <laughs> man. you know me and like I'm just sorry. Through studying his whole career, it's like he started off mm -hmm. rapping mm -hmm. and then he became the president mm -hmm. and then he became the CEO of a record label. Yeah. And then he started, he had clothes. I won't even say then because mm -hmm. during this whole process as a entrepreneur in the record mm -hmm. industry, he had clothes. He has an alcohol business. Now he has uh, sport clubs. Mm -hmm. After the sports clubs, my man's is an athletic agent. Mm -hmm. And before that even happened, this blew my mind. <laughs> blew my mind. It's like, I decided to write a paper on Ye and Jay-Z. And I don't remember what the like topic was, mm -hmm. but I had to like, deep dive. Yeah. I already knew their life, yeah. but I had to figure out like it what was. it was about them being adult figures mm -hmm. and what it is that they do. And so like, I wrote about the fact that he has, um, I don't, nobody remembers this for real. 
I think it was the Magna Carta album. Mm-hmm. When that album dropped, it was on like 10,000 or 100,000 phones okay. already installed. The album was already on phones. Oh, no. And so that went towards his initial record That sales. was uh, Kanye's, right? No, that was Jay-Z. Oh, Jay-Z's, okay. Yeah, so when the album... Because I was like, like Kanye kind of does that too. Now, now he same point. Same idea, but he, he made his own problem. <laughs> he makes sure he But this song. is the thing. Jay-Z gave him that concept oh, with this right here. Okay. So the album was already installed on the device when mm-hmm. he bought it. And he got a record cut sale off of that. Okay. And then he invested in the company that had the chips in the phone, okay. the actual operating program system mm-hmm. in the phone. He owned a percentage in the company that even sold them the phone. Oh. So they couldn't make the phone without his investment. And then he got paid off of them getting paid for paying it. Wow. And the album wow. was, I don't remember what it went, but it went past gold. You feel yeah. me? And Strategy. that was his first 100,000 sales just by selling cell phones. I was like, that's crazy. Yeah. He's on the board of Heineken as their marketing, like a part of their marketing directing mm-hmm. team. Crazy. And I just said this to say, like you were uh, saying. Nipsey's formula was kind of like, well, it wasn't similar to that, but he definitely was very. Other branches. Yeah. Yeah. But on top of his strategy for pushing his music, like he definitely, I forget exactly what it was that he did, but I remember reading about it and talking to my boyfriend about it, but. How he kind of like built this, he built the um, the engagement first before putting out like you know, yeah. certain projects and then. It... No, yeah, he didn't call his uh, projects albums. Me and Sajal were talking about that today, actually. And just. Uh... Were they mixtapes? Or were. Yeah. Okay. Essentially, he just didn't put the title album on it. Right. And people were telling him, like, you, that should have been your album. That should have yeah. been your first album. He was like, no, because I didn't want my branding mm-hmm. to have to like recover or to build up right. to a certain level because like, i didn't want to drop my debut album and have that be like right, right, right. debut and then my second or that my makes third sense, album be like, like that's the best work my last album that i did i called it like my debut album and really it's not i don't feel like it really is what do you feel like it should have been <sighs> just an album and i'm not trying to shoot my own stuff down i just don't feel like when artists really say this is my debut ep or album like I guess in a way it it is like me. It honestly, let me be honest. It was my first time putting out a large body of work that I was proud of. It. I believe. Oh my gosh, I want to say I had like twelve on there, maybe twelve or eleven. Oh my gosh, I feel bad for not remembering the number, but I know it was probably over eight records. And I was trying to put out an album for the longest. Um, my my album was supposed to be called Soul to Soul, and I put it. Um, I put that's the same title. I um I used for another project that I dropped when I was a lot younger, and it was just like a mixture. I honestly don't even want to blame it on the producers I was working with at the time in Vegas, but I was young. I was like fourteen, fifteen, trying to find my sound, and I was like also finding beats on YouTube, finding beats on Beat Stars. I was just doing whatever and just like writing whatever. So. Oh, yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm going to put out an album. So it wasn't even until um, 2022 that I actually, like, was, like, in ready and, like, ready to fully put that out. But I think I, an- another thing that I learned was just rushing. You know, like, I could have took my time. I couldn't no, make sure yeah, everything no was makes better. And so that's a lot of a lot of that I know now. Yeah. Like, I my next project, I know I do want to put out an EP that I'm excited about that is a part of like my rebrand and everything that I do want to put out into the world. Like I'm excited for this next project, but after that, I'm going to be locking in with my childhood producer and creating an album, like yeah. a real album. That's really, um, I want to bring on writers, friends like that. I know that I love their songwriting. Like I want to really allow people to help me on top of writing for myself, if that makes sense. So I feel like when I start, when I lock in with him, it's really going to be different because we made some great records when I was younger. And he made me realize a lot of stuff about myself. And he is really connected to a lot of um, producers, like, and just, you know, successful people. Um, but he, he, he's a businessman, but he doesn't even consider himself, like, really in the industry anymore. So when I work with, um, shout out to Junski. When I work with him, I always feel like I'm, like, pulling him out of retirement in a way for my own. Like, I'm, like, he's, like, my Timbaland and I'm a leader. Like, we have, he's, like, a pops to me, too. So, I love our chemistry, and I'm really excited to work with him because I feel like 
I want to give an album from top to bottom that's mixed well, that's written well, that has great messages throughout. You know, in that first project I put out, um, Fluent, it was me kind of giving the story of me, my growth, the heartbreak, and me finding love. It was like a whole roller coaster. But it was a beautiful project. Um, that was that that was pretty much the the message for the project. No, I, well, like what was that trajectory in like real life? That was like the the what my like what I was actually going through. If you would care. That I was going through I found my boyfriend. Um I well yeah to kind of re rephrase that. I was going through like a lot of toxic situation ships that were like somebody might might have been interested in me or somebody was wasting my time. Then I would have moments where I was like diving back into my music, like, okay, I'm going to focus on myself. And then I was like really finding myself and understanding what self-love meant. And then um, through all of that, like my grandpa got sick and me and my mom were really just trying to support each other. My siblings, we were like, all just trying to really support each other at that time. And I remember taking a trip and then I ended up meeting my boyfriend. And it's, I've been in like the most healthiest relationship that I've ever been in. So that project really was an emotional roller coaster that ended beautifully. But if I could go back and change anything about the project, I would want it to be mixed better. Like I was rushing and I didn't have to rush. Like the records are beautiful, but it could have been um, like on a, you know, on a, I, I don't know, sonically, it could have, like, Mr. the finished yeah. product, exactly, could have been clean. So, to any artists out there, take your time. Please take your time, because nobody's rushing, you know? And I think we can all be, like, our biggest critics. Yeah. And, I, for like, the little me was like, I want to get a project out to my fans. Nobody was rushing me. They would have oh, yeah. appreciated a much a better masterpiece, but it was really received well. Everybody loved it. So you know, sometimes I don't want to sound be... like I'm being hard on myself, but I just know, like looking back at it now, I just wish it would have been, you know, um, sounded like a debut album. But sometimes you know? a part of that journey is just in making stuff and creating and mm -hmm. like learning that and learning what yeah. did you want to talk about, how to be in the studio, yeah. studio etiquette, right, like, right, right. and putting songs out and being like, what does it even feel like if people yeah. like my song? Yeah. It's like finding the music you want to make. So it's like, all right, if you do wait forever. And you never put anything out. It's like you don't even know what you like to listen exactly. to yourself or what people like to listen to right. from you or like what it is to call a song finished. Mm -hmm. And then once you do call it finished, to be able to say that's not done right. and know the difference between this is exactly how I want it to sound mm -hmm. to this is what I don't like. Which you is, never know any of that yeah. until you actually put stuff out. Right. I want to start learning how to engineer. I've engineered myself a few times for like small projects, like even if I'm like just referencing the song that I work, uh, that I wrote. But I'm... When I was in Vegas, I would record at home a lot. And sometimes when I was even recording with other people, I didn't know what a good song sounded like. Right. I just knew that I was a dope song writer. Right. And, to be yeah. and then yeah. once you finally get to a, I don't want to say age or just a level you where you're like hear. hearing other you stuff. You get to hear something like, that's like, bro, that's what yeah. I need. I started, investing like. in, I started investing into, into a studio time. And it just felt like a reward every time hearing yeah. my music back, like on, on that level. Simple. Exactly. Yeah, it just has I'm a like, certain girl, energy to it. Yeah, so yeah. it's like you're starting to tell yourself, like, this could be something. Yeah. You're going to be something. So yeah. I, I'm glad I reached that level. I don't know what level it was. But <laughs> I actually have a song called Level Up. Yeah. You guys can go listen to it. Go listen all to Level platforms. Up. But, um... I feel like I've just artist development is such an ongoing thing. No, 100%. I actually had Timbaland. I joined his TikTok yeah. to send my song in. I yeah. I submitted it like weeks before, and so I had like pressed the button to join his live, and I did not think He's I was going to get selected that fast. When I tell you, I saw myself in the bottom corner on TikTok, yeah. and he was like, "Hello," like you know, he'd be rushing people, and I was like, "Oh my gosh." I was, my skin was, like, rising. That's dope. I was, like, so, and Timbaland is somebody I've been wanting to work with for the longest. Like, I'm no Aaliyah, but I feel like if I could have Missy and Timbaland in the same room, I feel like Missy creatively, they've both written so many beautiful records and produced, you know, and I feel like Missy is just such an empowering, like, woman. I want to work with her, like, oh, yeah. especially 
while I'm on this earth. I feel like so now said, just Missy be true. You're like two most wanted yeah, artists. Yeah, it's I've been feeling that way since I was a kiddo. So anyways, when he played my song, I was just like, oh my gosh, he's not going to like it. But he liked the first song that I submitted, and I wish I would have had newer music to like submit. Yeah. But then he played my my record calendar, and they he gave his advice and stuff and um his feedback. I mean, and he was basically saying that I needed um my songwriting to be better. And I feel like I wish I wasn't so nervous to like tell him that you know, like oh. I came back to it on a session. I was like collaborating with my friends and I was there for their session and the the engineer was like we got a little bit of time left so I jumped in the booth and yeah. recorded calendar and it didn't take me that much time and it was just one of those songs that was just like really spontaneous gotcha. and so it a lot of people the message is very beautiful and it was something that I didn't go through it was just something that I just came to you. barred you know yeah, yeah and I'm really glad it resonated with a lot of people but his feedback was awesome. I just wish that I could could have to tell him, like I could have co told him that I agree that or I still have a lot of time to yeah. still develop because I just wish I could have like been like, you know, you want to take me under your wing? <laughs> I'm open to some yeah. uh, criticism. I got another song I'm working on. But know? I'm excited to see where I'm going to be in 10 years oh, as yeah. a woman, as an oh, artist. Making music. Since, uh, honestly, professionally, since I was 14, 15. Yeah, in Vegas. Yeah, I started. I was walking to studio sessions with my mom. She's my manager, and she's an incredible manager. She gives me the best feedback. Sometimes feedback I don't want to hear, but it's honestly having a parent as a manager. It has its pro and its cons because they they really care about you, you know, and they don't want anybody to take advantage of you. No, so that's really good. But we have days where we we have to find a balance between like the professionalism being, and where yeah. yeah and being just like a daughter and a mom so um but definitely that was the, around the time that i started making music professionally all right when, when did you put out your first song you said you started when you were 14. um actually they asked my mom to be a manager and that's when she started getting deep into management and educating herself so um but yeah that was around it was around that time that i just really knew that I was gonna do music for real, and they and they, they were all boys, so I was around rappers all the time, and we we did hookah lounges, performed in hookah lounges. We had like uh studio like sleepovers in the studio, and we performed at community centers together, and we really protected each other. And my best friend today, we see she actually they were gonna replace her me with her when my grades slipped and we ended up like linking a lot around that time we had met like on a new year's at a new year's event in vegas and um we ended up collaborating on covers all the time and we just became best friends and oh, we've been dope. best friends for like 10 plus years now oh, she's married like i met her and her husband around the same time that me and her met so yeah it's just like it's been a beautiful journey and if it wasn't for gold clan i don't think like abriel would have been born honestly because we I used to like watch their work at their work ethics in the studio. Um, we all like kind of gave our own creative ideas when it came to our music videos. Um, our we had a, a song called "Show You Off" that was like playing in chic stores around around the world. And I had friends like two friends from my childhood. Um, so one saw the video in Washington D.C. and one saw in Sacramento, my hometown, at a chic store. So that was it was really amazing to experience that when I was younger. As I got older, I was performing in a lot, a lot of events, and um, just really just taking it one day at a time, seeing what it was like to engage with the crowd, um, seeing some of your your same, you know, your same peers and artist friends every once in a while at different showcases. Like we were all trying to get it, so it was just a nice little journey. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, that's the that's the awkwardness I've been talking about. I'm like, I don't know what the quote was. There a question? Okay. <laughs> but uh, one thing you did mention is just um, finding self love and that being a journey. Yeah. And two questions with it is what was that like like for you, and then what does self love mean to you? Oh, okay. One more time. One more time. Oh, you spoke about. So it's like the trajectory of the album mm -hmm. and one of the things you mentioned was finding self-love along with like mm -hmm. getting outside of being in toxic situationships and so 
take the journey of finding self-love like some people you know go to therapy some people mm-hmm. just stop doing you know going out like period they're just yeah. homebodies like some people pick up a practice they journal they meditate or it's like so what is self-love to you what does that Self- journey look like and how do you like foster and for me for self-love and I, I i definitely feel like now my self-love is even a lot bigger but then um it was really just practicing small things like you know spending more time with myself i've always been very big on solitude when i'm not like feeling like i'm connecting with the world properly so i'll journal um at the time i was um spending a lot of my spare time in the studio um working on myself uh really spending time with my friends i've never been like a person that likes to like get out and party a lot so for me it was just kind of like having food with the family kicking it at home kind of thing more um but I feel like self-love is really just giving yourself grace, um, being patient with yourself, not being so hard on yourself, and um, really just knowing you find you find self-love by talking to God, too. And um, for me, I know that's, that's how I'm able to um, understand what real self-love is, because I feel like if it's not godly then you know like you got to speak beautiful things to yourself it it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman you know what I mean so um I my aunt taught me about affirmations a lot when I was younger so practicing affirmations was another thing that um during that time it helped me with songwriting but it also helped me get through a lot of um bad days you know when I was feeling like you know my music career wasn't going in the right way that I wanted it to, or, um, or if I just felt like, you know, things weren't just aligning the way, you know, we all feel like that. So I'm just like, Nothing goes away I would too. have to remind, I would stay in prayer a lot and I would, um, I would stay in prayer a lot. And I would also, um, just remind myself that, you know, things were going to work out in due time or, you know, if it's for you, it's for you. Um, and then if it's not, it's not, you know, so just certain things like that in journaling. So, yeah, and now I pretty much do a lot of the same things. I take more time for myself. Um, I set boundaries, you know, when I'm, like, feeling overwhelmed with, like, family issues or anything, really, if it's friendship stuff, too. Like, I'm just learning to set boundaries and how to really put myself first. With self-love, you have to be able to say, you know what, I'm going to take a rest day so I can not just fuel myself back up, but really just figure out, okay, what am I going to do next? Because if you're, like, all over the place and you're trying to be there for everybody, you can't, no, yeah. you know, you got to, like, really be there for yourself first, so. I feel like for some people who are, like, really, you know, some people just are really good at building space for mm-hmm. other people, mm-hmm. and sometimes that becomes a crutch, and they don't realize it. Yeah. And it's just because I have to be there for them, and I have to be there for them. Yeah. But then you don't realize you don't even have the energy to do the things yeah. for you. Right. And so, no, that's a big part of, like, knowing it's not selfishness mm-hmm. all the time to yeah. say, I'm not doing anything. And it's not because I don't want to be there for right. you. It's just I also have to be here for myself tomorrow mm-hmm. and the next day. And I wasn't here for myself yesterday. Right. So what am I going to exactly you know, do in order to make it feel like I was if I don't actually just take the time right. and say I can't? So, and that's something I've had to learn even to this day, like Mm -hmm. almost every week, every month, it's just like, I just, I always want to do something yeah. or I always have something that I feel like I should be doing. Mm -hmm. But then I always, if someone wants to do or ask or have her and I'm able to, my first inclination is, well, why not? Mm -hmm. But then I'm like, well, you still have a list of things to do for yourself, Mm -hmm. bro. It's Mm -hmm. like, it's not selfish because if you don't, say no you're going to be thinking about all the stuff you didn't do while trying to get everything else done and so i think we should take a shot for that no for sure yeah (laughs) realization and growth yeah because i feel like some of the things i just explained too are like that's self-love and self-care yeah no so i mean you can kind of argue that they're kind of the same but they They go hand in hand yeah and so discipline is part of self-love like being able to say that's not what i'm going to do or Mm -hmm. what i want it's like and yeah. then setting the boundary for it. They all go hand in hand because right. self-love and saying no is setting a boundary. Right, exactly. And then having the discipline to be able to tell yourself, if you know, I 
I'd love to go out right yeah, now. Yeah, that's true. I would love to go to dinner right now. It's like, but one, I have to pay for my cover art and for the studio session. Two, I didn't go to bed until 3 a.m. last night. <laughs> yeah. I should go to sleep tonight. Like, mm -hmm. So it's just having the discipline to set the boundaries right. and then the self-love and self-respect enough to uphold it to yourself. And then mm -hmm. at the end, it's like you were saying, it just makes you feel exactly. like you're level up. I feel good about the choice that I made because it was a good decision to benefit me. I'll say what I was going to say. Oh, I can say it? Yeah. Oh, okay. So basically, um, I have a record coming out this spring called Grateful. And it's the the record basically is a message about faith and um, just how God plays a big part in everything around us, whether it's family, whether it's your your relationship with your partner, or whether it's just you know watching the kids the the, kid, the kids play outside or just kids saying innocent things to you that might make you smile, you yeah. know. And so it's a really beautiful record, and I wrote that in February, but I was going through the 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 ups Obviously. and downs of just the influencer stuff. And I was like, just creatively all over the place. Yeah. I was like, I want to do press on nails. I didn't know if I wanted to do hair. And I'm like, I'm so creative that sometimes I want to do it all. Yeah. And I know music is my first love and it's what God wants me to do. But I started like, you know, journaling and I was talking to him. I was deep in prayer and I was like, you know what? You don't need to do anything but sing. And so I had that conversation with him and I was like, you know what, this night, there was this one night, um, well, prior to this one night, I'll get to that part. So I was watching podcasts. My boyfriend was at work and I was like, I was just watching podcasts, like pretty much the whole day about being a multi discipline um discipline <laughs> discipline. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so being a multi creative and um yeah, it made me feel a lot better because, you know, there was one guy that I was watching and he was he's he was a professor. He taught um, art yeah. and then he also engineered and he was just talking about how like at different stages of his life. He, he was, was one down. Yeah, he was exactly. Yeah. So as easy as it sounds, I didn't know <laughs> that it felt really refreshing to hear that because okay. I didn't know. Like, I know we all go through. The ups and downs of like knowing what you know, not not knowing what to focus on. Yeah, at that, or feeling at like you're not doing enough. Sometimes. Exactly. So it's not even so, a matter of what to focus mm -hmm. on. It's just like you remember. Exactly. I was doing this. Am I not doing enough of it? Yeah. yeah. And so I just want to feel. I want to feel fulfilled. I want to know that I'm doing things right. But I really want to make sure that I'm focusing on the right things. Right. So I could be passionate and everything create the best product. Yeah. yeah. So now I finally have a balance with everything and that record. I just started writing, like I was listening to this beat and I just fell so in love with it that I started coming up with this melody and I um, started using the voice memo to kind of, before I started writing the words down in my memo pad, because I feel like if I forget something, I'm going to be mad at myself. So I, I <laughs> use the voice, the memo yeah. a lot. And um, I remember being so excited about it that I told my boyfriend about it. I told my mom about it the next morning. I sent it the voice memo to a few of my friends and they got to hear it in its rawest form. And now I'm going to be performing it um, at Breaking Sound on the 19th. Um, it's releasing this month and I'm like creating all these different marketing like ideas around the song just to kind of make sure it reaches people and they understand the message of it first before I allow it to be pre-saved. And with a lot of my, my records in the past, I just would release a single or I, you know, I didn't build it up Any before get, and I didn't understand marketing yeah. the way that I do now, but I'm not even looking at it as marketing. Really? I'm just like, how many ideas can you formulate around, to, this. around this song yeah, yeah, in order to, show it to, to make sure that people like are um, receiving it the way you felt when you wrote it? Yeah. And then once that happens, I'm definitely going to be posting. Um, I just had a photo shoot to find the cover for it. The rest of the photos I'm going to hold on to, but the cover is going to be chosen out of those photos. And then I'm going to drop the cover on Instagram and um, the release date. So, yeah, but it's such a beautiful record. And um, I don't know if you heard it yet on my on my Instagram, but I really do see a, a really dope visual coming out of it. And I was born April 2nd, so I'm a spring baby. And it's, it just sounds like spring and summer. Like, it just sounds like some like Erica Badu... Yeah, Jill Sky. It just sounds like something I grew up on, and it makes me feel good, and I really am excited to 
Make All right, so you said like it. earlier, you said Whitney, you said Michael, you just said mm-hmm. Erica Badu. Mm-hmm. Uh, who do you think are your top three, like, biggest inspirations? Michael Jackson. Ndiaye is definitely in my top three. And, oh, my gosh, there's so many artists. Oh, my gosh, there's so many artists. I don't really know who to put. <laughs> that is hard. Can I do a top five? All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, well, okay. I'm not going to put these artists in my top five, but... Usher, I was really inspired by as a kid. Like, I was really in the car seat singing a lot of confession songs and stuff. Um, Aaliyah also. um, She's going in my top five. So, Aaliyah, Indy Irie, um, Michael Jackson. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. That's so (laughs) (laughs) Oh. Um, Nas. Um... Y'all, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get canceled. Cause I'm like, this is my top five. Man. I'm like, <laughs> MGK. Um, oh my gosh, Tupac. I'm putting Tupac in my top five. Cause I, yeah, and I got him and Ali in there, so it, it's it's just balanced. Um, I just feel like I love a variety of like. There's so many hip hop artists that I love that were great storytellers yeah. and activists, and then there Aaliyah. She's a great. She loved to love, and she also is a great writer and performer um i think when it comes to artists that i like i personally was inspired by there i was inspired like different parts of their artistry right not so, just necessarily mm-hmm. a song the music, the music. exactly no, 100%. even the things that they talked about in interviews and stuff um i really love how graceful Aaliyah was or she also seemed like a goofball in yeah. real life and a lot of people only got certain sides of her so i can only imagine like the full yeah, yeah. the full version of the yeah. Leah, right yeah. um Pac was a handful and I think we all could see that, but he was very intelligent. What's your favorite Tupac song? Oh my gosh, Dear Mama. Dear Mama. Because it, and even my my brothers love that song. They dedicated to my mom a lot too. I just feel like um, he has a lot of great records, but I feel like that one, I just feel like he's telling the story of a lot of people. Right. I don't want to say just black children, right. no, but a lot of a people that story. had single mothers yeah. that made it happen yeah so that that record really speaks levels and um yeah he's man but michael also i feel like i'm I, i'm kind of in my michael jackson era um because he really loved peace and yeah. love and i feel like that's what i'm kind of like that's where i'm at right now and i feel like the world just needs so much peace and healing and if and I'm not saying I could do it, little old me can do it. Let me say that. But I'm not, I feel I'm not, I'm not the I'm not the answer. Yeah, but I feel like <laughs> one creative at a time. If we're no, yeah. all talking and speaking beautiful things into the world, it can happen. It's I mean, a ripple effect. It. Yeah, like I and I've just, I just I feel like it's um it's just common sense. If we're all talking about the right things instead of feeding the children with the, with the wrong things, then there's more of us out here that are. Speaking life. No, 100%. You know, that's just literally, that's the Actually, formula, you saying so. that just goes back to something I was about to say. Mm-hmm. Is that you were saying just like uh, positive affirmations and stuff. And that helped you on like the self-love trajectory of stuff. And then uh, a part of that is just the um, idea of, oh, you said God also is a big part of the self-love mm-hmm. aspect of your journey and everything. And so those two things go hand in hand because a lot of time with affirmations, you said what? I am. Mm -hmm. I am this. You're affirming yourself. Mm -hmm. And something that, uh, I don't know, I just reflect on a lot is in the Bible when Moses said, who are you? He said, I am that I am. I was just about to say that. You feel me? And so if you just break that down, Mm -hmm. it's like it's an open-ended statement because whatever you plug in at the end of it still fits. Mm -hmm. And so this is something that I also bring up when people want to talk about the frequencies or the universe or like mm-hmm. what it is because at the end of it everything has the same matter mm-hmm. in it right? right and everything is a part of a frequency spectrum and wave right mm-hmm. so it just goes back to him saying i am that mm-hmm. i am and whatever you put at yeah, the end of it i feel I like in it. i'm really glad that you brought that up because a lot of people um the way that i kind of think about it too is that god would want you feeding yourself good things right not bad things. Right. Um, that's another reason why we're not supposed to listen to the enemy. Right. But when um when I think about that and how he said that, it's just like I like I try to tell myself like I am worthy. Right. I am 
capable because going I right am, along yeah. with that is if I am, God is, mm-hmm. and we are made because in the image of God, him. I am as well. Exactly. And so it's like yeah. edifying yourself right. in his image. So it's like you're reminding, he said, I am. So every yeah. time you say, I am, you're talking to him. Yeah, I was you just telling me? my older brother today, too, because he <laughs> kind of can be a little like a little hostile sometimes. And it's Sunday, and I'm like, look, I'm not on that energy today. Yeah. I told him, I said, like, I'm learning that, you know, we all, as God's children, we can have a kingdom mentality. Right. Like, you know, you have to have a kingdom mindset. And I'm just honestly learning what that is. It's yeah, like, how to, not don't, to say yeah, it, but and to actually walk it, it and body yeah, it. Yeah, like, don't treat somebody, like, that way if you don't want to be treated right. that way. And that's all that it is. Or it's just knowing how to not react to something you know, like so, fa- like the wrong way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or just knowing that you could react to something and it doesn't have to be negative. Right. Like, you know, cause... even if it's a negative situation, mm-hmm. you don't have to necessarily feed into that same mm-hmm. negative aspect of it. Right. You can address it. You can accept it. Right. But you don't have to combat it or add exactly. to it. Exactly. And he felt so bad. He called back and was like, "I'm sorry, sis." I'm like, "Yeah, I'm like, thank you because I have faith in you." It's just that. I'm learning that. And we're all imperfect. You know, we got days that we're just not feeling it. And, you know, and that's when sometimes you might need to reflect and take some time to yourself. But we're really supposed to honor, you know, our mother and our fathers and our neighbors as they thyself. Uh, That's Matthew 19, 19. But yeah, or your days will be cut short. So it's like if you remember certain scriptures, It'll, you know, yeah, yeah it just you just got to kind of like uh, what's that? What's that saying? Um, practice what you preach. No, 100%. <laughs> yeah, because I'm like I'm, I consider myself like a baby Christian in a way because people think Christianity like you're like supposed to know it all or you're better than people. You feel like people I think wish that people... you're supposed to know it all if you well, say that. I, I feel like a lot of people think you do. If no, you I'm a Christian. well, the reason why I say that is because like. When it comes to social media and hearing other how like oh, other people, believers, well, then you tell me what you believe. How they feel on the internet? Yeah, I'm I'm always telling like my boyfriend like I rather just not. I would never. I really salute the people that get on certain platforms and, try and, and speak their it. truth because there's so many evil people out people out no, there yeah. that say mean things. Even if you feel like you God wanted you to share a message, yeah. And so they'll like really just destroy like try Anything to really yeah. To yeah. But no, what I'm I had an experience yeah. With so that. what I'm saying is that I feel like um, Christians people think that we're no we're we're supposed to be perfect, but we all go we're tested every day. But yes, God wants us to live according to His will. Like we have the instructions how to live. But I feel like we're we go through all these different tests that um I just want people to know that, you know, that we're what am I trying to say? Oh my gosh, I oh, just man. had a brain fart. I just want people to know that, you know, we get tested the most, you oh. know? That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> that not, yeah. we're not perfect. We're not trying to tell people, hey, come over to this side so you can be perfect too. No, we're tested every day, but we want you to know like we're trying to make it to heaven. And it's really so simple. But well, sometimes when you, you know? have conversations with people where you have to like pull that fact out, mm-hmm. it's not even because like the it's necessary. Mm-hmm. The problem is the com the combative nature of mm-hmm. it. I remember uh, I was young still. I was like probably 18 Mm -hmm. and it was not the time in my opinion for this Mm -hmm. conversation, but it just came up about why Christianity was even real and a Mm -hmm. thing. And there were two people who were answering every question. Mm -hmm. And we got to a point where we just looked at each other and we're just like, what do you want from me, bro? It's like, you don't want to believe. You don't want no... You you just want to have a problem with anything we're saying because yeah. some of what you're asking us or telling us, so this is what you're... No, mm-hmm. that's not what I said at all. Yeah. Like, Especially as I get deeper in my faith and like I talk about certain things and I have Bible study with my friends and stuff and talk about God with my partner. So what I'm learning is that some people can be really stuck in their ways and mm-hmm. they just want to be so wrapped up in the world that they just want to they don't want to live with instruction. And sometimes it's the they don't want to live with instruction hurt at all. By something already yeah. in life that they don't want to believe that that there's, there's something good. Yeah. yeah. It was like if it is as good as it's supposed to be mm-hmm. then why did this even Exactly. Well, I just want some solid proof. Yeah. And, and that's why I I want more people to um also just know that really it's not if it's the church that hurt, if it's if it's the church that hurt you or someone within the church, God never hurts you. Yeah. People always like, and I think, and I was just talking to someone about that, how like you know, a lot of people blame God for 
why something might happen in the world. Yeah. These are things that he has no control of. He, although he sees them happening, he's it's always like carrying being, you through it. You um, know, so omnipresent and omnipotent mm-hmm. does not mean that you're yeah. all interactive either. Yeah. And then we have free will. Mm-hmm. So I just looked at it like this after a while. It was like, if you're raising kids, say you have 10 kids, mm-hmm. not a billion. You feel me? I got 10 kids. And I already told you for the last 10 years, don't put that there. Don't go there and don't leave this open. Mm-hmm. You, you, what? Yeah. I told you the rules, bro. You already know <laughs> what's going to equal something negative. Yeah. Am I supposed to watch oh, over you I'm and kidding. work, intervene? Like, no, bro. Mm-hmm. Your mom told you to not go into the neighbor's yard because they had a dog. If you got bit, yeah. what did you want them to do? Go right. kill the dog? So that that's funny, too. So I, re- I recently saw a video. Um, I don't know who showed it to me, but this guy was basically super against Genesis. It's the first book of the Bible. And he was saying that he truly believed. I don't know the guy's TikTok or whatever, but he truly believed that basically if a kid was reading Genesis, that they wouldn't be able to see love within that passage. And what you just were explaining to me is the same thing as literally like a parent warning their child yeah. on something and then something happened and they're like, oh, dad, why didn't you tell? I did tell you well, I was not seeing, to cross the street. I don't think that looking, a child, you know, so. I guess a child wouldn't see love, but at the same time, it's like a child would have to learn what love is and yeah. for them to not see love what they would be missing right, is right, the right. compassion part of love. He said love, but also they wouldn't be able to see something like really good out of that. But it's like if I mean, you break it. Didn't his... exist. <laughs> he, 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 he just got life. Yeah, life. but like that, basically, you know how people try to make God this bad, bad person figure. because... He banished them, kicked them out, and because, now you have sickness you. and death. No, but 100%. If, but if, there was a list of rules before that happened. Mm-hmm. But no. that's why I think it's important to know the word because God has a wrath. But, and he also is just as powerful as Satan. But just because he... I no, you can't say just as powerful. No, no, I don't want to... Yeah, no, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. I'm, I'm so glad you said that because I didn't mean like... I heard you. I heard I'm you. I'm not about to give the devil no power. Sorry. <laughs> you're good, you're good. I just meant he's good. more power. He's yeah, more powerful. Yeah, yeah, than yeah. Satan, People so... want to say the devil is busy or there's so yeah, much danger in sorry, the world. Like, there's as much trouble and bad as there is. <laughs> That's why I said I'm a baby decide. Christian, y'all. No, I'm sorry. I got you. I got you. You're but fine. yeah, but like basically, don't don't get it. Don't get it twisted. God really, he's he when it comes to his children, he's about that action. That's no, what I'm yeah. saying. But. A lot of people think that just because people in the Bible have passed or there's been sickness, like yeah. that, that he's just out to be this bad person. No, there's lessons within these things. And I think we all deal with lessons within the world, too. I was just telling my brother, like, we all have so many different walks of life. Like, we're going through our own personal testimonies and walks of life that we're kind of similar to some of these Bible stories, no, you know, 100%. but we're here to inspire somebody else that's going through a similar situation. No, 100%. So, yeah. And I mean, with not seeing love in the first book, mm-hmm. it's a it's a hefty, a hefty little book, bro. Yeah. And so, like, no, you might not see your idea of the ideal love mm-hmm. in Genesis, but the whole reason for the whole second half of the book mm-hmm. was to make up for the lack of compassion. Right. And this is one thing with people, like, asking, like, why do bad things happen? And if God is supposed to be such a great... Mm-hmm. benevolent being why does this happen this is another way i started to look at it because it's like questioning myself within being a christian mm-hmm. and it's like god loves you and he wants you to do good and be well mm-hmm. but at the same time he will punish and chastise or he might not do mm-hmm. anything right which sometimes is worse because you need his help yeah. it's like bro hands like, like, off yeah. you feel me it's like nah sit in that you made that bed, now go and sit in it. And so one thing that helped me like wrap understanding around it is like, all right, bet. Let's take out the human aspect and the person. Mm-hmm. You said him and made it a person. But if we want to talk, people say the world is a universe. Or I mean, is a um, what is that word? Love it. Uh, what is that? what you were saying? No, 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 I was gonna say. <laughs> wow. It's simulation. A, oh, so yeah, it's a simulation, simulation, or it's computer code, That's or whatever. <laughs> and so I'm like, all right, bet. So if the world is a simulation, and the computer code essentially generated, a computer is going to be horrible at determining how to handle human beings. Mm-hmm. So for us to question God on His program that He set up, and He told us left and right, and we know exactly this is death, this is life. 
You can't get mad at a computer program for having a yes and a no. It only speaks that language. Mm -hmm. And that was the reason Jesus had to be made in human flesh to understand humanity. Mm -hmm. It was making the computer no longer a binary code, but actually making it a human. And that's how he was able to have the compassion. And while we atone to Jesus, uh, it was way out there. But it's the only, I couldn't under, because like they say, you shouldn't have a God before God. You shouldn't put anything before God. But once you step into Christianity, Jesus is supposed to be the liaison from you to God. And it just didn't wrap for me for a minute. And then I just thought about the different aspects of the two and how Jesus is supposed to be what God couldn't be in his higher self to us as being flesh beings. He came as flesh so that he could atone for the flesh so he had to understand the flesh which gives him that sway and compassion why he's who you go to to pray to and ask for forgiveness and atonement he takes the message to the father yeah because he's a computer code and only jesus can speak the code for it i was 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 like i was like bro that makes so much more sense now yeah interesting way to put it because I feel like there's, when I when I break down certain things in the Bible, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm glad I'm not. Like, <laughs> I think everybody kind of people right yeah, now. but in Bible study, it's always nice hearing like all of our different perspectives oh, yeah. on what we're like reading amongst each other. Because for me, I super was kind of like taking the the um the 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 the, fruit, the, the tree that they well the forbidden gosh, fruit yeah. the the tree that they weren't supposed to touch from. What's the name of it? Oh, the actual tree? I don't. Oh my remember. gosh. You know it? You don't know the name of the tree? Tree of Knowledge. Thank you. So, (laughs) I'm like, I was really starting to think of it as a, like a... Actual um, tree? No, like a... Apple? Like a brain, in a way, but some some form of technology that's like, you know, but I know it sounds a little crazy, but it's like, it's not, I didn't think of it just like a tree. We don't, I mean... Right, we'll because for to say a forbidden fruit or for yeah, it to be I just kind of so saw drastic. it as something that kept everything a operating. A you know, Yeah, and yeah. so it's like you have all of these beautiful things around you, but do not touch this. If you take the outlet out of this, then everything shut off. No, 100%. And then as soon as they ate that fruit, literally they're feeling ashamed because no, yeah. now they know that they're naked. And yeah. he's like, my children, why are you hiding from me? you're not supposed to know that you renewed. You know what I mean? So just listening to the enemy, it just kind of just opened all these different things that they weren't even supposed to really, you know, know. But yeah, even then, box. but even then God didn't give up on them. You know, oh, even though that there were certain things that now they were, um, you know, were cursed in a way, it's kind of like uh, Adam still had children. He still had grandchildren. And, you know, so... People don't look at those things. I feel like if you're if you're still if you're reading the word, then you know. But um, I think I just don't like how a lot of people like to make him seem, oh, yeah. yeah, like this bad person. But you know, this bad being either. And then it's like, look at all the good and the lessons and everything that, that came from life, it. You yeah. know, so yeah. I feel like that's just a part of growth as well, and not even just as a Christian, mm-hmm. but as you get older, you start to learn like compassion mm-hmm. and just like you know, just being sensible and exactly. stuff like that. And so it's like, bro, I didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. Why are you mad at me for reading this book? Mm -hmm. And then you start to understand, like, it has nothing to do necessarily with what I did or said, Mm -hmm. but with how they feel about this concept and maybe something that someone else did or said to them. I honestly feel, too, like if a lot of people that like if the people that are against the Bible or that don't know God or that have questions about like diving into their faith, I would honestly say that. If you just did it, it would be such a, a um like a a relief. I feel like because, some people don't because it's so yeah, it's just so big. Yeah, let me tell you though, I personally feel like it would be such a relief mainly because everything that you want stressed about, you finally have answers to. Some people have more questions. True. That's but why they keep... think. But if I don't look at it, yeah, it doesn't exist. Yeah, <laughs> but I feel like as you read the Bible, you start to find questions with the within the 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 books, or you know that's also why why, why prayer is good. But if you have brothers and sisters in Christ that know more than you, then it's good to ask them those questions that you have. No, 100%. so that's why I I call myself a baby Christian. But I've heard so many different scriptures throughout my childhood, throughout my life. And even before getting baptized, because I've been baptized twice. I just got baptized sec- um, recently before moving here. And when I got baptized the first time, 
I was definitely accepting Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior that time, but I wasn't actively in the Bible right. and at church every Sunday the way I should have been. And throughout that first time of getting baptized and being in high school, I was going to parties. I was around people that I shouldn't have been around. So I didn't understand everything that I would have known if I was in my Bible, if that makes sense. Like, no, I would have known about temptation more. I would have known about idolatry or, like, I would, like, not even idolatry, but just not, you know. Just in general. Like, temptation. Yeah, because, it's like you could play something yeah, into a To a idol, point to where like, I would have yeah, been putting somewhat. Putting it before. Yeah, I would have been putting God first. I would have been coming to my mom with more questions before acting in my flesh you know so that's all i'm saying but um i i guess it's it's like you know people they'll see but you would have to get to that point in life to um, experience it and that's the beauty that comes out of you know having i don't want to say for people that might not know god that have anything that's close enough to peace and love you know yeah 100 say that that because that's what i know god does for me yeah he's my peace he's my love and without him i'm i couldn't even be here so well one thing you kind of said is just like part of it was after going through that stuff you realized you could have gotten it elsewhere Mm -hmm. and something i just saw online is this person was commenting on um how people will ask believers questions Mm -hmm. and their answers are just talk to them or go mm-hmm. pray or get it out the book. And it's like, bro, I don't understand how to read the book. And mm-hmm. so part of it is like fostering that practice and that journey is how you begin to even understand it more. And it's not really something that's easily explained mm-hmm. verbally with one, two, this is how you do it. Mm-hmm. Unless you tell people what you did. And I feel like one, people don't want to tell people how they should walk as a believer. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'm not a pastor. Right. I'm not, you feel me? And then two, sometimes they don't feel as if they should share, mm-hmm. like, I don't, what this is personal been. information. Yeah. And it's like, you don't have to tell your journey, but a concrete tool as in sit down and look at this for 20 minutes goes mm-hmm. way further than go talk to them. How do I talk to them? Yeah. Some people don't know how to pray. It's like, I've never really prayed before. How yeah, should so. I pray? It was like, yeah, I thought prayer was like a really, like, I thought to... Much like into that, really like it had to and be that's perfect. That's what a lot of people think you have to say but a certain now way, I just like say certain words. And it's like no, and even with meditation, mm-hmm. it's like meditation doesn't have to be. I'm sitting here crisscross like this. Like mm-hmm. you can, but you can meditate on with, the word. Yeah, it's sitting there and exactly. thinking about something. Oh, I like that you said that because <laughs> I think that that's an yeah that a lot of people will automatically like oh. Uh, it's yeah. a big concept, but and it can be meditation simple. is what you make it. If it's just sitting at the beach and listening to, to the waves, yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. So, or if it, like you said, if it's you praying, that's a form of meditation. You know, praying and listening to the word, listening to a sermon. I was gonna say too, like just the best way to get people to, um, to walk with Christ is just by being an, an example a or sharing yeah. your testimony. People because, will just ask you questions after yeah. a while. Because for me, like, I, I wasn't even sure if I was even going to talk about this with you, but I, I'm i always telling people about how um I was diagnosed with schizophrenia a few years ago. And looking at my life now, I used to kind of be afraid to even talk about it. And I'm not on any medication that the hospitals told my mom I had to be on, where yeah. that I wouldn't be able to sing or write music and all these things. And even if it wasn't exaggerated like that, they were just, they really, I was very brain dead. Like, my... um. I wasn't able to function the way that I'm functioning, like I'm talking to you. So a lot of my motor skills were off and I was in the mental hospital for behavioral health for a while. And when my mom would come visit me, I would just look at her. I would eat. I know how to eat. I know how to walk to my room and to sleep. I slept there a lot of days. I was on medications and looking back at that, like, can't nobody tell me that God didn't bring me out of that you know what i mean like look at me you know but if i was to show like my my, and i eventually want to do this but if i was to show instagram how i looked when i was in the hospital or talk about really on a podcast or youtube channel for like an hour about what i saw in there the things that i talked to god about like i was really in a dark place and that was like the first time in my life that i was like I don't know what happened, what went wrong. The hospital helped me. Um, I wasn't eating food. I was rejecting food that my mom was giving me. So while I'm in there amongst other people that are doing wild things, 
I know talking to yourself is a form no, of I got mental you. health, no, but, but yeah, I, I was in there amongst a lot of things. Like I was, I was definitely twenty twenty one already, but I feel was acting. I was still acting very childlike. So my mom was like, "You guys can't put her on the ch- the, the children's floor," and they were like, "No, she's an adult." So she was really worried about me. But they had me on like Pedialyte in there because I- <laughs> on um on days that the medication wasn't such on a high level. I was like able to understand and to call my mom like, hey girl, I'm doing good today. You when am I gonna be home? You know, and she's like, you have a few more days, you know, to talk to your um doctor and stuff. And so every time I would talk to my doctor, I'm like, I'm doing good. I'm learning so much in um you know in in, in group and stuff because they would put us in group to talk about like not just suicide but just how to um live a healthier life, how to um really process our feelings and stuff and we would have to kind of talk about these things amongst each other just to go home and I really started like giving my all in some of these groups and I started finding myself again and then even coming home my mom like I said she's a manager she was still managing some of like my friends and the other artists that she was managing at the time and I came home and I just remember I was on medication, but I remember seeing them perform at hookah lounges, and I'm like, "Mom, I could, I could go too." Like, mind you, I was performing before. All before, yeah. so coming home and seeing everybody still doing all these things, I was like, "Mom, you gotta give me a chance." And I told her, I remember telling her maybe two years later that, "Do you think it would be a good time for me to wing myself off the medication?" And I haven't taken medication since. I don't smoke weed anymore or anything. Bless you. But, um, yeah, so that was pretty much that. And, like, honestly, nobody can't tell me that God didn't make that miracle happen. No, I like, I was really not functioning. I was not myself. And I honestly, till this day, don't know. I smoked marijuana before um, getting diagnosed with schizophrenia, but I don't know if it was the marijuana that um actually triggered it. triggered it or if it was just life or depression because I didn't know that I was going through, I had just got, went through a bad breakup. I was also trying to move to New York and, and like sign a record deal. I was, I was trying to work with people. I was doing a lot. And my mom, I remember telling her, mom, I'm going to New York. I'm about to work with this producer. Um, around that time I had just worked the P Diddy tour. It was like 2016 and the bad boy reunion tour. And I met a producer there named Union that was just super down to earth. And he ended up actually coming to visit me in the hospital with my mom. It was so dope because even though I wasn't able to really like talk to him the way I wanted to, my mom knew that he played a big point in my life and which is why I wanted to go work with him in New York. But she was like, you don't got no New York clothes. And I was just doing a lot. And I was like modeling at the time, but I was also still trying to find myself within music. But I didn't notice that these were things that I was trying to do to keep my mind off of that breakup. And um, even the breakup itself, he was trying to, like, kind of manipulate me in different ways and make me do things I didn't want to do. And I didn't I was too young to realize it. So after all that happened, I really looked back at it like God was just sitting me down for a time to spend like for me to spend time on with him, but to also see and like really reflect on even the times that I didn't I couldn't process things he kind of made me see kind of and I I'm I know this I know it sounds wild but I felt like it was kind of like a peek into what hell was like like really hearing people scream at the top of their lungs and and they they have these demons attached to them I was in there like really very quiet but I knew that there were things around me that I just, you know, I was just trying to make it out alive. And I remember the doctor telling my mom that um, I was a singer. She was like, she said she's a singer, songwriter. And I'm like, I told her that, but I don't remember telling her that. So somewhere in there, God reminded me, like, you're not going to be in here long, you know. But I, I say it was like hell because there were people in there that would say mean things. There were doctors in there that weren't the nicest you know, I remember having so many different, um, like, I don't want to say visions, but hallucinations off the medication that I thought one of the guys that was like, um, like that was like a tech by my room. He used to like kind of just stay outside my room with the clipboard. I thought he looked like my older brother and I remember trying to touch his face. I was like, John, no. and he kind of like pushed my arm out the way. So yeah. it was like, there were people in there that weren't really patient with Friendly. the patients. Yeah, yeah they weren't really there doing their job yeah. and i just feel like a lot of people that are that do work in behavioral health 
church or um they should know to really just be patient with yeah. those people because there's a we're lot of them that I ended up seeing. There was a boy named Torian that was a tech when I was in a hospital out there, and I ended up doing a showcase with him. That's funny. super dope person still. Yeah. Like I remember him reminding me like like a um like an older sibling, and then he's like, Ashley, I don't want to have to you know. Like, you know, right not write you up but put you in the room or whatever. Not in the room, but it's not the padded room either. No, no, I got But you. he would like, have to put me on timeout when yeah. on times that I was like, you know, like I wanna go Very home and I was like, like breaking like, stuff, yeah, like trying no. trying to break stuff. Cause you kinda get so upset too that you're like in these in this like confined right, I don't wanna be here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that you yeah. get aggravated. So he would remind me to just be cool or just go to my room to take a breather. And just coming home and like really being in my element of making music, and then I cross paths with paths with him again. He's like, "This girl's dope," you know. Right. So, um, but at the time being in there, I was like, "These people don't even matter when I get out of here." And I didn't. It was like seeing them was like reassurance again from God because you're not supposed to like I guess add or like friend some of these people on the outside once you right. get out of these facilities. And they saw me like living my best life, meaning like chasing my dreams, doing interviews, performing, um, posting different things about my life. And they're like, this girl, the whole walking testimony. So that yeah. makes me feel good to um, just walk in my truth and show people that like, and there's so many miracle stories out there. Mine is just one no, yeah. of the many, but there's people that have walked again after being told they were going to be paralyzed. Oh, yeah. There are people, um, oh, my voice. <laughs> but yeah, there's people that that can walk again. There's people that can see again. So it's just like we serve an awesome God. And I feel like he's just really always performing miracles because I'm here. And that's another reason why I just want to make sure I'm putting the right music in right, the world now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I told myself moving here to L.A., I wasn't going to allow myself to be in any um, like force myself or just be in any of the wrong rooms like you know you don't have to be in every room you have to overextend to, yourself exactly in order to succeed. and i just want to still be a, around the right people and god's people and um if it's for me uh, it's gonna be for open me. up the space mm -hmm. oh, yeah. so just taking taking things one day at a time and like allowing god to just lead me you know because i i feel better just knowing that my life is in his hands and not mine. You know, we should never just try to do things how we want to do. So I feel like if it's not guided by him, leave me out of it. I hear you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, to that, uh, that's beautiful. <laughs> and I think that's a good, a good okay. wrap up. Uh, that was fun. I don't, see, I know I talk so much. I was, <laughs> I was having fun, but ended up just going into church. But see. No, it's something that people you know, need to hear. And then it's a big part of your journey. Yeah. And so it's just like, goes to speak on to, like yeah. you were just saying, the fact that you told her you were a singer. You don't even mm -hmm. remember. remember. My mom, when she tells people, she's like, she told me this. And I'm like, and what's crazy is that me and my baby, like, we, we saw the pastor that my mom asked to pray for her and my, my play brother at the time. He was, he had helped me a lot with songwriting, um, but he lived with me and my mom at the time. So he would visit a lot with her at the hospital. And she said, this pastor was a pastor that we would watch all the time um, virtually. And I'm like, mom, we got to go to church LV. He was just like, you know, a very hip pastor that everybody, like their church was very, it was like the size of a, um, at the time, I think their, their, their first church was like an old, it was an abandoned shoe warehouse. So it was big, but now they have an even bigger church. And so when I met him that day, it was, I, it was the church I got baptized at, actually. And I just remember telling him, like, you know, Pastor Benny, I, I've been, like, watching you for a while. And my mom, you prayed with my mom when I was in the in the mental hospital next door. It was in uh, uh, Seven Hills. Uh, it was, like, in Henderson in Las Vegas. Um, and, yeah, he just was like, wow. He ended up, like, kind of talking about me in his sermon that day. And I and I I wasn't I didn't felt no way about it like right, oh my it's God. not what I came here for yeah, yeah it wasn't even that I just think that he was also touched too Looks to like know it. that because yeah. my mom was telling me how he was kind of in a rush that day and it just kind of made me think how sometimes pastors you know a lot of people have a lot of like you know they expect you guys to just stop and be there even if it's just for a second and he stopped and he prayed with my mom and I just wanted him to know that 
God worked on top of him, them praying that day. Like, I'm here. I'm here at your church. I still love your church. And I'm here to get the word, whatever it is. And me and my baby are out to L.A. after this. You know, like, we were still prepping to leave. And um, I didn't know I was going to get baptized that day. So That's funny. I just, um, I think it was, it was really a beautiful moment for me and him. Cause he was like, if you're out there, I hope you don't mind, you know, like, you know, me talking about this, but he, he just kind of used me within the lesson he was already given and stuff. Cause they, he has like a different series of sermons. And so they have like segments, they have different like monthly segments of what they're talking about and stuff. So it really tied back into what he was already talking about. But yeah, I'm just really glad to be here and just be able to. I feel like I'm give. I'm. I was given another chance, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah. And I don't want to be ashamed of talking about what I went through anymore. I get emotional thinking about it because I think like sometimes I still have dreams about the yeah, hospital. Man. Yeah, and I'm like, dang, was that like some form of PTSD? But then I have. Um, dreams where i'm still like you know amongst the people that i see every day and stuff too so oh, yeah. then i feel fine but i'm just learning to like i i went to an event i have a, a christian a sister in christ out here that had a, like a um an, a fem uh, a feminism event and we it was like it was like a um a christian feminism event and uh we talked about um women empowerment and we built like flowers and stuff and we all ended up kind of just like ending in a like a um a prayer session and i did i i ended up i ended singing and also i i led work oh i didn't lead um i had did like a worship song like a cover to a a christian song and then i also kind of had told some of the young girls and everybody in the room like about my story and it felt good to do because i'm like the more i talk about it there was somebody that ended up reaching out to one of the florists and she was like, I just wanted you to know that I also was in a behavioral health and just hearing your story just it it, helped, it made me feel like not alone because nobody just it's like saying like I Walks was in the, the yeah, like I was in a nut house like yeah. Yeah, I, I don't even think of it like that, but I was in a psychiatric hospital. And I don't, I didn't even know that I was depressed or what triggered my psychosis, but I'm here today no, to tell sure. people that, you know, I just see so many, even celebrities like Amanda Bynes, you know, I don't know what trauma or what she's been through, but I've seen different people like, you know, saying how like she, she's sometimes cited in Hollywood or, you know, I don't know when the last time somebody's seen her, but I hope that she recovers, you know, anybody that has been through something in life, whatever, like. I just, yeah, I feel like you could bounce back, you know, by the grace of God. So, yeah. No, 100%. Uh, thank you. Happy to be here. For I didn't even know we were still. <laughs> no, yeah, that's what I'm saying. We got to actually <laughs> verbally wrap it up. Well, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> but no, thank you for coming thank through you and for sharing your story. Uh, it's an inspiration to a lot of people. And you dropped some gems for me as well. So we touched thank on some you. good points. You dropped a lot, oh, too. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, uh, Again, shout out to Sake High for providing the sake, all oh, God's favorite jewels for providing the gemstones, and you guys for tapping in. I'm Chuck Diesel. I'm April. Y'all have a good one. Have a blessed night. Peace. Yeah. yeah. There's still some sake in here. Um, either of you want to try? You want some? Oh, sure. Yeah. That was fun. Thank you. No. I'm like, I feel like I got a little better towards the end of the <laughs> just talking. Um, but yeah, I just like honestly. This is the cup that she was using. I just want to make sure I'm staying true to myself within my artistry, because I feel like you know you shouldn't want to be anybody else. And I was just telling him like you know I feel like that's what God would want from me.